Uh, I'm not going to talk about the transpatial approaches, but I just mentioned some of these. I was I trained a lot in these approaches when I first started Scalbase, and I published uh, 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 as well about this one. But this particular, we did uh, at the BNI, we did a classification in seven levels. And uh, before transpenal, that was not extremely popular, not like nowadays with the endoscope. And some of these are still used in some large skull based lesion, for example. This is a level one. Level one, according to our classification at that time, was just uh, taking the sub, uh, uh, was a frontal approach, uh, sub frontal, basically, I was in, in, uh, involved in also removal of the supra orbital ring up to the nation you know, at this level. And you can see, you know, taking down the ring, it will usually take this one in two pieces. And uh, uh, it was a good approach, particularly for anything anterior fossa, planum sphenoidale, cella, and also all the way down to the cella, uh, retrocella area bilaterally. So it's a very good approach for large lesions that were extending bilaterally. The second level, sorry. The second level was, uh, in, it was the same approach as the number one, but was involved in also the nasal bones and the orbital ring. That was particular for lesion then extending intracranially, but were extending also in the nasal cavity. And this is a very good approach for uh, extensor neuroblastoma, for example, some more aggressive tumor of the basal skull that were eroding through the plant sclerodale, lamina cribosa. Right? The level three, So level three is uh, the same as level two. I was involving, it's still involving actually, it's the uh, lateral wall of the orbit. Basically by doing that, it's possible to displace the ocular bulb laterally. And that will uh, obviously will expand the, uh, the dissection and the exposure for lesion into the uh, extracranial, into nasal cavity particularly. Though those ones extend bilaterally. That was a good approach. For, uh, for again, this stator neuroblastoma or the major skull based lesion. Um, the next approach, next level was level four, which was a, uh, was a maxillectomy. This was a very good approach uh, when vision was originated from the common signs again to the nasopharynx. Right? It's a very good approach, it's still used nowadays, uh, particular lesion extending laterally. Um, this is a, it's a very good uh, surgical avenue. Um, the other, sorry again. So this is a level four. Level five was a Lefort approach uh, with the splitting of the heart palate. And this is very, was a very nice, still a very nice opening for major tumor of the nasal pharynx all the way up to the base of the skull. So it's very particularly, this is a good approach for midline lesion, extend a little bit more lateral. For a more lateral exposure, I would have preferred still the level four because it's a max left to make you more exposure laterally. The level six was a purely trans-oral approach, which is still popular, but a lot of these approaches have been replaced now for trans -tenoidal. But this was particular for a major lesion that was in, uh, in um, the distributed particular on the midline. And the one was the best approach was the level seven, which is a mandibular swing, basically splitting the mandible, is swinging the mandible laterally. This was the major lesion that uh, were involved in nasopharynx up to the base of the skull in the infralabyrinthine space as well. So swinging the mandible, and some of these were I mean, um, coupled with the glossotomy. So it was, was very invasive approach. But sometimes it's difficult to, it's no other, you have no other option when the lesion is particularly big. This is particularly for skull based uh, procedure, right? Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.